Hey, so what's going on? Welcome back to another Arsidio ZSL podcast, man. I am so excited for today, as always, like I always am. And today, we are getting into problem solving or solving problems in general. Now, but before we get into that, I want to ask you, how good are you at problem solving? And where and when do you get your best ideas? Now, when we look at problem solving, are you one that focuses on the problem or a solution? Now, there are so many ways of going about doing this. Um, when I, you, you know, I would put a lot of my energy into things that I had no control over. If there was a problem in terms of my salary, like two years ago when this tutorial job had shut down and I had and could do absolutely nothing, I was very reactive. I was terrified. I didn't know what to do. There were so many things that I was just letting control me rather than me controlling my output. However, through coaching and so many other things, I began to develop, okay, what's the solution? It's not so much a statement saying I don't have any money. It's how can I make more money? Having already had the audience, not as massive as it is today, you know, I started putting things together. Then when I finally first got that email saying, hey, I need help with TOEFL. Could you help me in July 17th? of 2020, that's when I realized I could scale my podcast. And so from that point going forward, I never had problems in regards to money anymore. You know, even, you know, in, in the midst of all the chaos and again, being able to develop those things that help you like, you know, keep calm amid chaos is very important. But in the midst of all that, I always look and I don't project what I have today into my future. I project and see what today is, and that's a collection of thoughts and things that had already occurred in the past. So when I hear people say, oh, you know, we don't have this money, we don't have that money, we don't have this money, I'm like, that's just whatever you have right now is not what's going to happen in the future unless you continue projecting, I don't have money into the future, then therefore you will not have money. They never say, you know what, I need to figure out a way how I can make more money and become more self-sufficient, more independent and financially independent. So in saying that solving problems is a step-by-step -step process. I think I did that on my ESL podcast a while back. I believe it was during the summer months of July, August, or September. If you just put problem solving or Senio into the ESL, uh, into the search engine of Apple Podcasts or Spotify, it will come up. All right. And so with that being said, when and where do you get your best ideas? I'm going to give you some ideas here. All right. First thing in the morning, in the middle of the night, traveling to and from work, lying in a nice hot bath uh, while you're taking a shower. That's when I get my best ideas, or I did back probably between 2018 and 2020. Listening to music, that never really happens. On the golf course, not, not sure if a lot of you actually play golf. I sure as hell don't. On the tennis court, hell no. After a good sleep, mm, I would have to say a sleep, yes, but more importantly, a nap. I believe naps are very, very, very important for me because I wake up with that reinvigoration, right? And this had happened when I was just so tired. I mean, you know, I just didn't sleep well the past couple of nights. And so I went into a hard nap for literally one hour, woke up and my energy was right there spot on. And when that does happen, I'm just on fire like the discipline, the level of me getting things done, it just skyrockets, right? Uh, in problem solving meetings, uh, let's say while you're daydreaming, there are a number of different things and ways, you know? So first thing in the morning, it doesn't happen as often as it used to. I believe that this happens more when I am uh, taking a shower in the morning right? Uh, oh man, this happens at a variety of different times during the day while I am traveling to and from work. So when I'm on the sky train or in the subway here in Bangkok, uh, there are a lot of things that start clicking. I do have a nice little notepad that I carry with me to just stay on top of things because if I don't have any uh, to-do list and those next key drivers in my business and whatever I have to do, I end up just going on to media and onto garbage websites and just having my attention taken away from what is so bad in the world right now? So in order for me to control that, I always say, okay, what are the things that I could get done in the next half hour? Okay, sit down, notifications off, go. All right, 
uh, in the middle, like I said, in the middle of the night, in the middle of the, uh, uh, in the middle of a meeting, rarely happens. Middle of the night, no way. Um, obviously, meditation. Okay, so you know this, and by the time you're listening to this, I will have already finished uh, coaching and training at this company. Uh, you know, the last 50 hours there was very unfortunate, and you know, four relationships had fallen apart. Just because you get to see people's true colors in the midst of chaos, in the midst of miscommunication, although that it was their fault, they just have that I am 16 and angry at my dad's syndrome. You heard the sales podcast at the end of January and February. So now that that is all finished, said, done, history archive, I could really speak openly about it. That's number one. Number two, I had to control myself because there were times that I would literally, you know, go home and I would take those very uninspired students, I, uh, you know, uh, faces with me to my home. And then I would, you know, begin to judge myself based on everything that had happened that specific day and all these other things. But then when I actually really put it into perspective and say, you know what, that afternoon class on Wednesday is total dog shit and it has nothing to do with me. And so I have no responsibility for the energy and the intention that other people bring to my training classes. And it's crazy because, you know, that following Friday uh, and, and this and so many things happen that Friday morning because, you know, I got a trio. Uh, big shout out to Soleil, Anelli and Astrid. Uh, another TOEFL preparation classes uh, course has just kicked off. And between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m., there are people walking in and out of this meeting room where I do the training. And me, I'm just so lasered and, st you know, still I focus on those three ladies trying to figure out the next best plan. And then I'm like, oh, my God. They just, you know, they just bought a, you know, a package of like a thousand USD. And so I'm like, okay, all right. And I brought that energy into the lessons that Friday morning. So the Friday morning, it was just so funny. We were doing so many different things, but even in the afternoon, it was much funny because three people who hadn't shown up to my classes probably since December of last year showed up and they brought a variety of different personalities and good you know, and so, and they, they were all part of the HR department too, which is so funny, but man, just so grateful. And so what, what do you, what do I, what am I trying to say by this? Well, when in the bad Wednesday class, I meditated before going there so I could become very intentional about the energy and joy I want to bring to the class, regardless of how they respond. And then when I leave, and especially after Wednesday's class, I'm like, oh, these sons of Oh man, I do not like them and this and all this blah, 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 motherfucking blah, right? And so what I ended up doing, I was like, you know what, Arsenio, don't bring this energy. Do not bring this energy to the next, uh, you know, to your next, uh, you know, to home, right? Let's say on Wednesday. And so what I did, I ended up realizing it building up on the soft belly technique. And I don't know if you guys have heard this, Dr. Joseph Gordon has talked about it. And I'm like, and it's the simplest things. So all I do is I inhale very deep, thinking about soft. And then when I exhale, I say belly. And then I listen to Tibetan bowls. I listen to a variety of different things, a cascade waterfall. And I get so in tune. It is so amazing. I wick away everything. So at the conclusion of that day, Wednesday, I'm like, okay, let's do this meditation. So by the time I got to the inner, the, you know, the outskirts of Bangkok to take the train back into the inner city, I already had let go of all that toxic, negative, bullshit ass energy that those students particularly gave me on that specific day. And then, you know, I'm able to reset. So I do the same thing, did the same thing on Friday morning. And although things got really crazy, the driver was 15 minutes late and I almost didn't get these trio of women because this guy's lunacy. But when I actually ended up going back home, I wicked away everything and I began the new weekend. So with that being said, on that specific day, I just had four more training classes left. By the time you listen to this, baby, it is over. So happy to get my Wednesdays and especially my Fridays back. Uh, and it's really good to, you know, start focusing on the things that are absolutely working. So in saying that there are problem solvings, there are energy and there is energy that I take from one routine, one activity to another, and that's not good. You have to be intentional. It's like uh, Brendan Bouchard's uh, release meditation technique, which you can find very easily on YouTube. You know, him saying release, release, release. Me, I love the soft belly. It's far more effective for me. And 
And I do that not only, you know, when I go on trips and stuff, I do that in the morning when I wake up. I do that in the morning when I wake up. And then in the evening, sometimes I go on a journey. It's another journey, which uh, Dr. Joseph Gordon, he talks about being on a country road and hearing and what do you see? What do you smell? There's someone there that's helping you and all these other things. It's just so phenomenal because it's so message driven. And when I do that, going to sleep, I wake up in the morning, do my meditation. I'm on top of the world. So problem solving and where and when I get my best ideas is being in tune and being 100% focused and being able to take breaks throughout the day. All right. So with that being said, uh, we're going to, um, we're in, in the next podcast. I don't want to make today's podcast too long, but uh, what I would give you a, t- a question for today is in what ways could a big or a small company save money? Okay. So in what ways could a big or small company save money? Okay. And there is a Japanese expression. It says, none of us is as smart as all of us. So what ends up happening is, you know, we, if you work together to solve and come up with a solution, more is better than just one. Okay. So if you think about it, think of as many ways as you could save money. Your company could save money. And then what we're going to do, we're going to listen to an idea in the next podcast, listen to an idea in terms of a company being awarded a $100 bonus too. And then we're going to listen to a couple of other things. This is going to be fantastic. There are going to be a lot of things that we're going to be listening to and get learning how to give suggestions and figuring out what problems are, what the objective is, what action do you need to take? There's going to be a lot of great things, including problem solving techniques. So get ready for the rest of the month. We got a lot of fire coming to this podcast, so stay tuned for more. I'm your host, as always. Make sure you follow me on our Arsenio ZSL podcast, Instagram, over and out.